Hi guys, welcome to Kingana. My name is Jonita Maya and this is a stream yet interview. On today's episode, we shall be talking about the raising immigrant issue in the United States and I am joined by Mr. Charlie coming all the way from Jackson, Mississippi. He is an author, a journalist and so much more. You're welcome. Thank you for having me uh, on this program. I enjoy it. Okay. Um, I just tell people who you are, because I believe my intro didn't do you justice. Okay. My name is yeah. Charlie R. Braxton. I am a poet, playwright, screenwriter, a political commentator, cultural critic, and Pan Africanist who lives in the United States. I like how you said who lives in the United States. So you recently wrote an article that actually um, intrigued me and I was really interested in it. Um, that I noted down a few things that you said, but I just want us to start with. So, um, to quote you from your article, you said, we must have a deep understanding of the root cause of our current immigration dilemma facing cities like Chicago, Washington, D.C., Denver, and New York. Yes, so that's because, what we'll be talking about today. Yeah. Yes, because people in the United States, the way that it's portrayed in the media, it just makes it look like the immigrants just popped up out of nowhere. They're just invading the country when there is a reality in reality there is a historical and a political reason why there are waves of immigrants particularly coming from south and central america um but uh we have to look at what are those causes when you look at say for instance immigrants have been coming here from south and central america in mass since the 1980s since ronald reagan uh, the primary m reason why a lot of them were coming from Central America then was they were fleeing political persecution. The United States was backing a lot of uh, dictators like Somoza in Nicaragua and uh, dictators in Guatemala, Guatemala, excuse me, and Chile. And so a lot of these refugees were fleeing political persecution and coming to the United States because the United States has this um myth about it being the land of immigrants which technically we are if you're not native american if you're not uh you know indigenous american we are all are immigrants some of us against our will i might add as my ancestors were okay um thank you for that i feel like um giving us a history or like a background into that gives us gives people listening in a better understanding of what's going on I've, I've been seeing articles and i've been seeing the news and if you've been watching kenganda you see that there are so many migrants immigrants however you can whatever name you want to come up with um videos on that and um they're calling it uh, you know Amer america's immigration crisis you know like the u.s is in, is in a crisis with it with its immigration Okay, Let, let's. The, the term crisis is a loaded mm -hmm. word. Okay? okay. Because if you saw, uh, and in and, 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 and an extent, the word crisis also is a loaded word because I believe it is backed by racism. All right. Nobody is saying that about the Ukrainians who are coming here. All right. Uh, President or former President Trump, and I hope he remains former President Trump, uh, talked about why can't we get immigrants from Sweden instead of, well, you know what he called African and uh, Latin American countries. We won't say that. But it's rooted in racism, okay? The reason why you're seeing so many um, immigrants coming to cities like Chicago and Denver and New York is because they were shipped there by racist Republican governors who did so under the guise of sending them to sanctuary cities when they really knew that they were sending them there to overwhelm the resources of those cities and turn people against the Democratic Party, which seems to be working quite well because now you've got African-American people who are in these cities like Chicago, which is a predominantly African-American city, 
who are seeing their resources being or taking from them because they're being overwhelmed. But they're being overwhelmed because Republicans are doing that as a plot. All right. We have to understand that that's a Republican plot. Nobody's talking about that. Well, I'm glad we're talking about that. <laughs> I'm glad we're talking about that. Um, to also quote you, I'm quoting everything from your article. You also say, yeah, no problem. Yeah. Why are so many black people, given our historical experiences with white supremacy, so quick to jump to the anti immigration bandwagon? And there are some black people who are anti or anti immigration. So let's talk about those. Well, let's talk about it because I think some African Americans who are jumping on the anti-immigration uh, bandwagon are falling victim to the propaganda. As I said, we're in an election year and the Republicans are playing to win. They are very ruthless. So what they know is that you've got these democratic cities that are predominantly black with limited resources limited resources so if i send them to these cities they get overwhelmed and then they turn against the people who look like them in new york city you see african americans turning against african immigrants who look like them that doesn't make any sense it makes no sense whatsoever and what's going to happen is as these immigrants become in, integrated into the city, they're not going to they're not going to forget how these African Americans are treating them. It's very important that African Americans understand that the immigration, the immigrants, are being used as political fodder. Mm -hmm. They're being used as political fodder. This country is 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 rich enough and big enough to absorb these immigrants if it wants to. Uh -huh. Okay? And these immigrants are coming because someone bigger than both us, of us, want them here as cheap labor. Labor follows capital, no matter where it goes. It's going to follow it. So, if capital decides we need labor here we need cheap labor here in america and american citizens are quick to unionize american citizens are not going to take uh us abusing them american citizens want a certain standard of living then we bring in cheap labor to replace american citizens that is not the immigrants fault but that is the people who run the corporations who make that decisions fault and that is whom you should have the smoke for not the smoke for the immigrants who are coming to get a better way of life you should have smoke for the capital list who are saying we need these people here and we don't care about our citizens That's who you should have to smoke for. Mm -hmm. I hear you. But what do you say about um, U.S. citizens that say that may, that the immigrants, you know, maybe take up their jobs and their housing and they're taking up their resources that they have, that they, that they need to use as citizens, you know? What do you say okay. to this one? As I said it before, I'll say it again. Mm -hmm. There is enough resources in America to absorb these immigrants. But if those Americans are so concerned about immigrants coming to their country to take their quote unquote jobs, they should also have be concerned about what their country is doing to meddle in the economy and the political affairs of the countries that these people are leaving from. Okay? Let's look at, take for instance, um, Mexico and the Mexican immigrants who were coming. Okay, 
prior to the NAFTA uh, agreement, which was signed by uh, Bill Clinton, there weren't that many Mexicans coming in mass like that because the economy was strong enough and the Mexican farmers could raise their family off the price of maize. After NAFTA came, it dropped the price of maize to the point where the average Mexican farmer could not raise a family. So there's cheap labor that needs to be exploited. America opened its doors and said, come on in. If you come to America now and go to a major construction site in any city, you will see a lot of Latino immigrants working there. Somebody made a decision to get them there and hire them. Somebody made, just as somebody made a decision to drop the price of maize so that they could not raise their family. That's that's the reality. This is a game that's being played by capitalists that's a lot bigger than you and I. And when we put climate change into the mix, you're going to see people move around the world in search of resources. That's going to be the reality of life. Unless we do something to change it. Um, I came across a tweet from Elon saying how he was saying, I'm quoting him guys, illegals in America can get bank loans, mortgages, insurance, driver's license, free healthcare, and instead college tuition. What's the point of being a citizen if an illegal gets all the benefits but doesn't pay taxes or do um, jury duty? Who what do you that? say about that? Who Elon Musk. That? Elon Musk. Am I saying it right? I think that's how they pronounce his name. The guy who owns X and I know Elon. I know who he is. The man's a racist. The man's a racist. And he is South African, in a way. And he's a racist. (laughs) White South African who fled his country after the fall of apartheid. Came to America. And starts saying a whole bunch of I can quote a bunch of things he said that are racist but I don't know of any illegal immigrant that's able to do that as a matter of fact I know some people who are here undocumented quote unquote not illegal by bad who are worried about being deported so that quote makes absolutely no sense to me and I think he made it to just to stir up racist sentiment. So no, no, no. I, I don't know what he's talking about. Yeah. Okay. If, if that's the case, there'd be a whole bunch of uh, more immigrants coming here to get benefits. Hmm. That's not the case. That's not the case at all. Now, our some immigrants getting some benefits that uh, decent human beings need? Perhaps, yes. People need to eat. They need a place to stay. But you can drive through any of these cities and see these immigrants living in tents. Is that his ideal of getting a good, uh, a, you know, loan for a house? Hmm. I don't think so. Mm-hmm. Um, in your article, you also um, quoted Candace Owens when she when she said that she would be okay with um, mass deportation, and she doesn't know if that makes her like in, inhuman or anything like that. But I know that there's some black people watching this, and they would be okay with like mass deportation. I'm not okay with okay. mass deportation. I'm not. I'm not a fan of Candace Owens, but I I, I put that quote there to show you uh, how heartless some people have become. Mm-hmm. Okay, uh, 
it's my understanding that Candace Owens' uh, grandmother is an immigrant. She's a dis she is a descendant of immigrants. Okay, how quickly some of us, you know, who are family, who families are immigrants, are forgetting how they came here. Again, I say this again, and I every American, unless you are indigenous American, Native American, are immigrants. And for us to turn our backs on people who need help, especially when our government in many cases, some of these uh, immigrants are coming, have interfered in their countries to the point where they had to flee, is the height of hypocrisy. If you say that, um you also say that every black person in america knows that whenever whites feel their power like leaving they take action to maintain their power by any means necessary this is the basic psychological motivation behind the anti-immigrant sentiment it, it, is, you think it, it is yes perfect example listen whites in america right now are becoming a minority all right, which means that in a democracy, the majority is supposed to rule. So if the majority becomes black and brown, okay, and form a coalition, what do you think whites, what happens to whites in terms of them holding on to political power? Not necessarily economic power, but political power. They're out. And the election of Barack Obama taught them that. And it escalated their xenophobia. I mean, right now, the black people are in danger of losing the Voting Rights Act, which was an act that my family, my ancestors fought to get so that they would be able to vote in a free and fair election. They're trying to roll that back because they're seeing black people get elected in political offices. So quite naturally, when they see this wave of brown people and black people come, they're concerned. So they're go they want to do something to stem that tide. And at the same time, they also want to do something just in case they once these immigrants come here and they're absorbed in the country to pit us against one another. So now you have black people and brown people fighting each other over limited resources, quote unquote. So we'll never be able to form a coalition to run the country. It's 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 political game at its best. It's 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 three dimensional chess. That's what's happening. The capitalists are playing three-dimensional chess and we as, as, as regular common working class black folk are playing bottle top checkers. I hear that. Um, so let's talk about, you know, I'm African, so I just hear mm -hmm. these things. Um, you said illegal immigration has become incre incredibly pervasive since the Biden administration administration took office now let's discuss that okay mm -hmm. uh, again again republic republicans were facing an immigration crisis under trump okay so immigrants were coming under trump as a matter of fact trump used his anti-immigration rhetoric to stir up his white racist fan base fanboy and fangirl base to go out and vote for him and put him in office okay but that didn't stop the immigrants from coming he locked them up in cages they still came do you think that these people were coming because they oh i want to be locked in a cage in america when you talk to the average immigrant they love their country they didn't want to leave they had to. Okay, so uh, 
I believe that immigrants are coming to this country because they need to come. And that the Biden administration, once they took office, Biden took office saying that he was going to treat immigrants fairly and properly and humanely. Okay? So he stopped a lot of the anti-immigration rhetoric and he tried to uh, and I'm not trying to be a shill for uh, Biden even though it may sound like it to some, some people but what he tried to do was be a little bit more humane and then once he got in office more people started coming all right and to, to, to make it look like a crisis when they were coming they were predominantly coming to Texas Arizona California, maybe Florida. So what did they do? They shipped them to these democratic states that call themselves sanctuary cities to overrun their resources because they knew by doing that it would turn the people in those democratic cities against the Democrats and against the immigrants. And it's working. It's working like a charm. I, and I say in the article, I'm amazed the Democrats didn't see it coming and and have some kind of, I guess, program or something to stop it. The problem with the Democrats, in my opinion, is that they're too busy playing defense when they should be playing offense. Okay. Well, thank you for sharing. I. As an African, I have definitely learned a lot from this episode. You know, um, it's I can't speak on certain things because I don't know. I know someone will be like, "You as a Ugandan, what do you know? You know, what can you say? You're not living there." Anyway, well, you, so well, you you can you can tell me what you feel and what you read. Oh, that <laughs> honestly, I've not done extensive research you know i've seen i've done i've read bits here and there and i've seen videos here and there but i don't think i'm the right person to voice my opinion on that yet okay so uh, well once... i will send you i actually sent you a, a link to an article by nbc where yeah, they're saying say. they're saying mm -hmm. that actually immigrants are being slowed down particularly biden wants to stop immigrants from nicaragua from coming yeah okay now the problem too now i will be honest i will say this one of the problems that a lot of people are facing is that because we don't have a, a mechanism set up to screen these immigrants from coming in that you're getting some bad actors who are coming uh people who may have had criminal backgrounds and they're not they're coming here and creating havoc in, but that's not the majority of the immigrants who were coming. That's just not them. Now, I also saw, again, this is a subject I could talk about all day, but I also saw where uh, I think Kinganda reported that the immigrants come and they're asking for, uh, they're making demands. Did you see that one? Yes. That video is up on our channel, yes. I, I, that's where I saw it. I saw it on your channel. Uh, I don't know what to say about that because I haven't heard about that. I, I would need to see the uh, the uh, source material that uh, O'Shea got to deal with that. But I think he makes a, 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 a somewhat, I think his point was when you come to a country, you can't make demands. I believe that was the gist of what he was saying. Uh, and I would say, I, as a human beings, you have human rights. If I come to your country and you violate my human rights, then I have, I have the right to say, I want you to treat me as a decent human being. But now, do I have the right to say, I don't like the way your laws are running? No, I don't have that right. I don't have that right. I'm here. You know, I came here. You know, maybe not by choice, but I'm here. I got to live with it. 
But at the same time, I do have the right to ask for, uh, to, to be treated as a human being, to, to have food, to have adequate uh, clothing and shelter if the country's capable of providing. That's my opinion. Okay, um, thank you so much for agreeing to do this interview. For the people who would like to follow you or read what you write, where can they find you? Uh, you can find me on medium.com. Uh, you can Google me and find me on any number of uh, websites. Uh, you can reach me through Facebook at Charlie R. Braxton. Please be respectful. Uh, and you can reach me on Twitter. And, uh, you know, if you hit me, I'll hit you back. Okay. Um, thank you so much for that okay um okay guys thank you so much for watching if you have anything you want to say about this video please tell us let us know in the comment section please be respectful we're here to learn from one another teach one rich one exactly and follow us on all our social media pages at king and the nation follow me at Johnny Tamaya on youtube and instagram i'll see you guys next time bye